morning. Welcome to First Unitarian Church, where our mission is to explore the eternal, nurture community, and pursue the common good. Whoever you are, whomever you love, wherever you are on your spiritual journey, and whatever your life circumstance, you are welcome here. I have a few announcements this morning. First, a reminder that the annual congregational meeting will take place immediately after the service today. The Zoom link and the phone number, if you'd prefer to call in, can be found in this week's email update, the weekend update that went out on Friday, and on our private Facebook group. As Unitarian Universalists, we affirm and promote the use of the democratic process within our congregations and in society at large. The annual meeting at which members elect lay leaders and vote on a budget for the following year is a primary way that we practice our democratic values. So if you are a member, please come to participate in one of the key gifts and responsibilities of membership. Next Sunday, instead of another Zoom service, we're offering something different. We invite you instead to take a little break from your screen and maybe sleep in and then enjoy a slow cooked and lovingly prepared breakfast or take a long walk, or do something for the earth, like plant milkweed for the migrating monarchs, or do the internal work of anti-racism, spend some time reading a book, uh, Resma Menachem's My Grandmother's Hands, or Ibram Kendi's How to Be an Anti-Racist, or Crystal Marie Fleming's How to Be Less Stupid About Race, uh, those are all great options, but there are many more. You might listen to a podcast to learn about the history of white supremacy, seeing white or 1619 are good places to start. Research which indigenous people's lands you're living on, or maybe learn a little bit more about our larger faith by watching a recording of one of the worship services or general sessions from this year's General Assembly, which is just wrapping up today, or attend another UU congregation's virtual service, or really stretch and try an online service from another faith or denomination that you don't know much about, and that might make you feel a little uncomfortable. We'll post lots of links and suggestions of things that you might do. And then come to our virtual coffee hour next Sunday at 12 o'clock to talk in small breakout groups about what you experienced and what you learned. So that's for next Sunday. And now we begin our service today with these words from Tolkien's Return of the King. Well, here at last, dear friends, on the shores of the sea comes the end of our fellowship in Middle Earth. Go in peace. I will not say do not weep, for not all tears are evil." Unquote. Today, we will say goodbye and go in peace to some beloved staff members and members of our congregation who are moving away. And yet, this isn't the end of our fellowship in Middle Earth or anywhere, for fellowship persists across the distances. And now, the prelude prepares us for worship this is Wendy Pitt performing Beverly McClary's arrangement of a Billings tune.
the end of this month, Sherry Fair will be stepping down from her role as our chair of our Lifespan Religious Exploration Team. I want to thank Sherry yet again for her amazing service in this role. And Sherry, would you light our chalice for us today? Thank you. Um, we light the chalice as a symbol of our sacred time together. The burning chalice represents the light of reason and science, the warmth of loving community, the cleansing heat of justice, and the flame of hope. Thanks, Sherry. Our opening music is an anthem called The Garden. We played this not too long ago, but it's worth hearing again with words and music by Jim Gordon, arranged by Beverly McCleary, performed by our choir at First Unitarian. <laughs>
our interim lifespan religious exploration director. Those words keep, <laughs> the acronym has changed over his time with us, so it's a mouthful. Pete has a story for all ages to share with us today. Pete. I call this story, Change a Thunderclap Brings. As a young boy growing up outside Boston, I lived in a house with four big trees in the front yard. An oak, a maple, a hawthorn. They stood along the sidewalk. And in the middle of the yard, a very tall, very straight pine tree Suitable, I thought, for a large ship's mast. It was also a large rhododendron bush that was down against the house behind the pine tree. It must have been a spring Saturday afternoon because it was gray and raining and the family had gathered inside watching television on a 10 inch screen of a TV set that my dad had built before the Korean War. There was thunder and lightning and intermittent heavy rain. The rain would stop, but the thunder and lightning would continue. The thunder got louder and louder. The storm was getting closer. Sounds a bit like spring in Oklahoma. The lightning strikes got closer and closer together too. We were counting 1,000, 2,000. Fire trucks started charging through the streets of the town, sirens and lights blaring and bells clanging. And bang! Sparks were coming out of the wall receptacles. The TV sparked, it flickered, and then there was no more picture or sound. We'd been hit. We rushed to the kitchen and started a bucket brigade to the third floor bathroom. The pine trees branches were on the ground between the tree and the rhododendron bush. The tree had been topped and the trunk was split nearly to the ground. A hook and ladder truck jumped the curb, drove across the grass and set up the ladder to the roof so firemen could climb the ladder and investigate. The fire damaged some pictures from my grandmother's house that had been stored in the bathroom closet. Other than the tree and the paintings, there really was very little damage. Everyone was okay. The fire damage to the paintings turned out to be a blessing. No one in the family liked them. Quietly, they were put in the trash. Dad built a new TV with a much larger screen. The house is still there. The maple tree is still growing. The oak and the hawthorn survive. The rhododendron has grown larger, but the pine tree is no longer in the yard. That's the end of the story. Every Sunday, we take an offering. Since 2002, all the cash and designated checks from that offering have gone directly to external nonprofit organizations doing good work in our community, our Change for Change partners. This month, our Change for Change partner is Sisu Youth Incorporated. 
Their mission is to ensure that youth experiencing homelessness have a safe place to sleep, the security to dream, and support to make a positive impact on the world. During COVID-19, they are still taking meals and supplies to young people at their gates, delivering food boxes, and hosting telemed for mental health support. So at this point, I'll play some more music from Wendy Pitt, and I'll give you all some time to make your donation to our special Change for Change. You may wish to make your donation using a credit card through our website, or this could be a good time to find your checkbook, write out a check, and put it aside to mail to First Unitarian tomorrow morning. Let today's offering reflect our highest aspirations for the work of the church in the world. Is now a special time of our service. The life of our religious community is always changing. Babies are born, children grow up, people marry or divorce, loved ones among us pass away. New members come into this community and bring new possibilities and all of us learn and change. Today, we are honoring three very special passages. First, the retirements of Beverly McClary and Diane Broyles from their long and wonderful 10 years as our director of music and organist. And we are also honoring the completion of our contract of service with Pete Fontenot, our interim director of Lifespan Religious Exploration. We begin with a video tribute that's been put together by Chris Gonzalez. He's asked me to let you know that a longer version of this video with additional tributes will be shared with Beverly and Diane. Thank you so much, Chris, for putting this together. Diane, you are part of the fabric of First Unitarian Church for me. 
it's unfathomable to me that you will not still be sitting behind that organ. If We will miss you dreadfully, and I hope to continue to see you and be your friend in the future. All the best wishes to you. Hi, Beverly. This is Joan. I know you'll remember me. I love you so much. I want you to know that I've been in a lot of choirs and sung with a lot of different music directors and you're my favorite bar none. Our choir never sounded so good and I just want to thank you for all the hard work you put in. You have the incredible energy of a 30 year old. I just wanted to say thanks for everything. You've done such a wonderful, wonderful job with us. I want to give tribute to both Diane Broyles and Beverly McLary. I've known Diane more than twice as long as I've known Beverly, but I want to compliment their teamwork and all the effort for both of them working together to provide music for this church. It has improved the reputation of this church, it has brought in members, it has met the need for our congregants to have a deep appreciation of what music brings to the service. Their talents are, I don't even know how to describe it, we have been so lucky, so fortunate to have been led by these two wonderful women. We will miss them very much. Hello, Diane and Beverly. Um, just wanted to say a few words on, uh, you know, your completing your tenure with our church and uh, the choir. You know, when Carolyn and I came to the church and uh, joined the choir, you made us feel really welcome. And, uh, you know, and that's true for the entire choir. It's a very welcoming uh, place, but you made it really special. Diane, we have organists being in common here. And uh, so I know the long hours of work and practice and, and the lovely music that you've chosen and uh, so it, it's been a pleasure getting to hear you every week at the organ and that's coming from one organist to another so well done. For the last 23 years I've sung with church choirs off and on, with our church choir off and on. Before that I sang with the community and UU choirs in Louisiana, Colorado and Tennessee under some very excellent leaders. I consider you, Beverly and Diane, the best of the best. Hi Beverly, hi Diane. Although most of our church will miss you, no one will feel your absence more than I. You've composed wonderful music for us, directed our choir of sometimes unruly members. Your leadership and enthusiasm has surpassed all the other music directors that I've experienced. And Diane, you are always there. You have accompanied in every kind of situation. And I really appreciate uh, all the effort in many years. You've been longer than anyone I've known uh, to be at a company us. So thank you. Hi, Diane. I just wanted to say I love you and thank you so much for all of your wonderful hard work. I know it took hours of practice at home, at church, and then you'd come out and play every single note correctly every time. Good luck with retirement and everything you do. Love you. Bye. When the news hit that you were ready to retire, I was delighted to learn that your motivation was once again creative. You needed more time to compose. You had lots of tunes in your head that needed to come out. I hope you share your new creations with us and have a fruitful and satisfying time doing it. Love to you always. It's been a wonderful ride. Sue Hake. Diane, I'm sorry that you're going to lose your, leave your special place uh, in, in our staff, but we hope to see you and hear you many more times on uh, in the organ. I'm sure we will. You've been a wonderful accompanist. I love your, your solo work, but also maybe we'll get to hear you a little bit more singing because I like to sing alto with you. You're, you're a wonderful musician and I'm so glad to have you for a friend and I will miss you as a regular part of the staff. Beverly, it's been a wonderful 20 years, and I'm really sorry that you're going to be leaving, but I understand. 
You have such knowledge and expertise and ability to lead. And I was really proud when you won the national contest for a morning so fair to see. And we all got to go to Tulsa and sing it at the National Choral Directors uh, Conference. And that was just such a great thing. So you've given us lots of other wonderful memories of that sort, but that's the one that stands out the most. We'll miss you, Beverly. Diane, my birthday sister. What can I say? Um, I'm not, you're not leaving me. You're still my friend. I'm still gonna see you over at Margaret's house um, and other places. So goodbye for now, so long till we meet again. Thanks for always playing for everybody and everything that comes along and always playing on your day off and playing through the summer and everything that you do. So it's, it, this is not goodbye, it's just see you later. Love you. Hi Beverly, this is Wendy. So I joined the church kind of in the fall of 2016 and for a year I wasn't in the music program. But every Sunday I love to watch Beverly. You're awesome, I love you, I love what you do with the choir, you're amazing. Um, and I love Beverly to death. I've had it from the horse's mouth that she will continue to let me play with her as long as I'll be Diane, it's been a, a great period of time knowing you and hearing your artistry. I am so grateful for the hours and hours of work you put in to support the music program of our church. You are a, just an incredible person, and I wish you well in the future, and, and I hope you continue to be a, an active musician. I love you, and uh, take care. I consider myself the luckiest man in Norman and Oklahoma City for having had a long time, more than two decades, with you, Beverly, and you, Diane. And I wish we could be singing together now and playing together, but I will forever carry you in my heart. Thank you so much. Dear Diane, here's to grandchildren and lunches with friends. You've been a stalwart in my life for all these years. I've long ago lost count. I hope we can do lunch soon. Love, Sue Hinkle. So Beverly, dear friend, it's going to be sad to not have you at the church anymore. We have so many contacts and I hope to see you again at Chamber Music. You have been a wonderful choir director, a wonderful musician. You have so much respect around town. Um, you'll be keeping up the good work, I know, but we will miss you as choir director. It won't be quite the same. Diane, I've appreciated so much decades of your accompanying us and playing other times when we needed special things played. For example, at my wedding. You played at my wedding and I appreciated that so much. Diane, I'm so glad that you're still going to be in the choir whenever we can actually have choir and have it be safe for people of our age. I don't know when that would be, but you'll be here and that's really very important. We'll miss your playing. Beverly, I just want to tell you how much I appreciate all that you've done for our church and for our choir. I've learned a lot from you. I've enjoyed singing, especially your songs. I love the big choral works, of course, but you're here every day. It seems like this building will fall down around without you because you're always here and you're always working. You're gonna leave a hole in this place. So I love you and best of luck. To my dear friends in the choir, it's hard to believe I'm going to be leaving the bench, as it were, this, this, uh, after this now, uh, after a very long time. Uh, making music with you all has been a joy, and I look forward to at least joining the, joining the singing when we can do that again together. This lovely grand piano will be a, a memento of, of, the, of the, the music we've made together, and I will have a place for it that's very special and it will make me think of all of you and, and our time. Thank you. And we've just come from a nice party, a goodbye party, uh, Diane and I, 
from the staff and from the uh, membership. And guess what I got for a present? This wonderful baton that has my name on it. And it's so sweet. It says, to Beverly, you gave us our voice. This reminds me of our one of the most outstanding, most fun things this choir has ever done. Our trip to Transylvania in uh, 2013. We traveled halfway across the world, and it's time for us to sing in this Unitarian church in Transylvania. And I couldn't find my baton. So guess what? I conducted without the baton. And I continued to do that for quite a number of years. But I see they, they want me to get back with the baton. So anyway, here it is. Thank you, choir. It, it's been lovely. And this group has been a fantastic group to work with. They're so kind to each other. It's like a family. And we can't wait until they get back as a group and can start singing again. In our shared spiritual home, we become more whole with each person who comes here. Each one of us makes the all of us more who we are supposed to be. In the role of director of music and composer in, in residence, Beverly McClary has been a part of our wholeness. Today, with gratitude for the music she has brought into our lives, and for the close community that she has built within our choir, we release Beverly from her service with us. We also release Diane Broyles from her service to this community in her role as organist. We say goodbye to her as a staff member and we bless her as she returns to her role, ordinary and beautiful as it is, as a member of this congregation. Here is an anthem written by Chris Gonzalez in honor of Diane and Beverly. It's called Our Voice. You gathered us, a simple choir. Give us a way to touch people's hearts and inspire. You've been our teachers, you've been our friends. You've given us a gift of music that will never end. To share with others both in pain and when we rejoice. Now we sing our thanks to you, you give us all voice. You gave us words, you wrote our songs, and you guided our family for so long, shown us the joy that music brings. You gave us our voice so that we could sing with each new hymn or anthem's words. You taught us how to make our emotions heard when we sing together our spirits lift and we thank you for sharing your music's gift to share with others both in pain and when we rejoice now we sing our thanks to you you gave us our voice we're standing here with voices loud and we will keep on singing to make you proud and share all the joy that your music brings you gave us a voice so that we could sing you gave us a voice and now we will sing Yesterday, I received this greeting from Reverend John Alou Johnstone, who is the program minister here at First Unitarian, serving with Beverly and Diane. And here is her greeting that I said I would share with all of you. I appreciate Beverly and Diane both for their commitment and professionalism, not to mention their work ethic. Beverly made creating music look a lot easier than I know it is. 
She corralled a choir that I know was not always full of good followers. Diane's musical ability always translated to beautiful music. I know they will be missed tremendously. And so for Beverly and Diane, upon their retirement, we offer this blessing by poet John O'Donohue called appropriately for retirement. This is where your life has arrived. After all the years of effort and toil, look back with graciousness and thanks on all of your great and quiet achievements. You stand on the shore of new invitation to open your life to what is left undone. Let your heart enjoy a different rhythm when drawn to the wonder of other horizons. Have the courage for a new approach to time. Allow it to slow until you find freedom, to draw alongside the mystery you hold and befriend your own beauty of soul. Now is the time to enjoy your heart's desire, to live the dreams you've waited for, to awaken the depths beyond your work and enter into your infinite source. Thank you. Pete Fontenot began in his work with us as Interim Director of Lifespan Faith Development in August of 2018. Among other things, an Interim Director of Religious Education is charged with helping the congregation come to terms with its history, evolve a unique religious education program identity, identify needed changes, renew associational linkages, and focus its energies on its future. Today, upon the completion of this work, we release Pete from his service in this role. Pete, thank you for being willing to share your educational ministry with us. We are thankful for all we have learned during your time here. We accept that you now leave us to serve elsewhere in other ways. Your presence among us will not be forgotten. We have presented Pete with some small tokens of our gratitude and good wishes. Among them were seed pops to assist him in growing his next garden, like the one he helped us start last summer, some beard wash to help care for his special Santa beard this winter, and a set of black socks to prompt his singing the Chalice Camp song when he wears them and to remember that they will never get dirty. We hope you'll also take with you special memories from your time with us here in Oklahoma City. Thank you. Thank you, the people of the First Unitarian Church of Oklahoma City for welcoming me as your interim director of Lifespan Faith Development and accepting my leadership ideas and prodding during this transitional time. Thank you for the enthusiastic support of our programs and experiments. I shall always fondly remember the many things which we've been able to accomplish together. And I shall also remember with a smile some of those activities which didn't work out the way we thought they would. And with some sadness, the things that we planned and didn't accomplish, and those which we were never able to start at all. But I wish you well. Thank you, Pete. And now our blessing for Pete from the writings of the Reverend Howard Thurman. Do not shrink then from that which turns up in your road, suddenly making of you an ultimate demand. 
know that if you respond with all you have, your little life takes on a meaning in the light of which even death itself is a little thing. Go thy way, all things say, thou hast thy way to go, thou hast thy time to live. Do thy thing. Know thou this, that there is no other who can do for thee that which is appointed thee of God. So go thy way. Blessings. Oh, we continue saying goodbye today. We turn our attention to members who will be moving away from Oklahoma City, including Lisa White, Greg Bell, Carol Koss, and the Palumbo family, John, Gita, Shanzani, Giovanna, and Yosana. Now, we have a few others who'll be moving away soon. Felicity, Allison, Elaine. We're not going to say goodbye to you quite yet. <laughs> Like every human family, our church family is formed and reformed over time. As members are born, as they die, as members are adopted into our family, and as they leave our congregation for a new home in a different place. Several months ago, when this pandemic was just beginning and we were starting to understand that physical distancing was going to become a new reality for an extended period of time, I told a little story about an invisible string. The moral of the story was that people who love and care about each other are always connected in ways that may be invisible but are powerful. Even though we can't see the strings of love that connect us to those who are far away, we can feel them. When we think of those far away people, when we miss them, when we bring them into our mind's eye, it's like giving a little tug to that invisible string. And sometimes if we really pay attention, we can feel someone tugging back. So if you have the string you held during that service, go ahead and hold it up to the screen now. And if you don't have your ribbon or string, just hold up an invisible one. Lisa, Greg, Carol, John, Gita, Shansni, Giovanna, Yosana. Know that your presence will be sorely missed. We will miss the laughter, the joy, the hard work, the love, the creativity, the poetry, and the commitment that you brought to our congregation. But know that you are always connected to us, no matter where your travels may take us. I mean, wherever they may take you. We have a piece of music that I'd like to play now called Communion, which is based on a poem that Carol Koss wrote. The music was commissioned for the church centennial in 1993. So in honor of Carol and all the members of our church family who will be leaving us to begin the next chapter of their lives, here is that hymn. It's called Communion.
finally, let us honor those members of our church family who passed away during this church year. As we say their names, you may wish to light a candle in their honor. And we know that they have gone on to join the ranks of our church ancestors. We light a candle for Mike Brown and for his mother, Susan Brown, whose ashes are now together in our memorial garden. We light a candle for Gerald Gallivan, beloved husband of Barb Gallivan. We light a candle for Marilyn McKenzie. We light this candle for Eloise Dykus. We light this candle for Margot Hewitt. We light this candle for Linda Larison. We light this candle for Gordon Deckert who died recently. We light this candle for Phil Horning, who also died just recently. In these strange times, we also much must pause to light a candle for all of those who have died of COVID-19, so many of them unable to spend their last moments in the presence of loved ones. We remember them. And we light a candle for all of the black lives lost to hatred and to police violence within the past year. Rest in peace and in power. And now please join me in a moment of silence. In this silence, I ask you to recall all those members of our church family who have blessed us with their presence, their commitment, their love, who have passed on, moved away, changed their role from staff member to member, or who will be moving away very soon. Let us hold all these beloved ones in our hearts. And now I invite you to imagine that you draw a string, an invisible ribbon of love from your heart to theirs. And as they move away, the many strings become as a web. And in that web of love, there are so many others, friends, acquaintances, strangers alike, all held in an in infinite network of countless strings of care. Blessed be, amen. Sherry, would you extinguish our chalice? We extinguish this chalice 
but not the light of love and community that continues to burn in our hearts. I leave you today with this old Irish blessing. May the road rise up to meet you. May the wind be always at your back. May the sun shine warm upon your face and rain fall soft upon your fields. And until we meet again, may you be held in the palm of God's hand. I'll leave you today with one last piece from the arrangement um, that we heard uh, Wendy Pitt performing, uh, accompanied with Beverly McClary. Um, and then again, after the service ends, please come back and join us for a congregational meeting. Blessings on everyone. Amen.